Hello everyone, Complete Indy here, and welcome to Battle of Wits. Today, since we're celebrating the haunted season, we're going to be building around a haunted commander. Specifically, today we're building Tovalor, Dire Overlord. Tovalor costs one generic, a red, and a green for a free free with whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. As well as at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves or werewolves, it becomes knight, and you transform any number of human werewolves you control. The backside is a 4-4 with the same card draw ability, but also having the ability to pay X green red to give a wolf or werewolf you control plus X plus zero and trample until end of turn. Tovalor is, in case it's not clear, a werewolf-focused commander, which is exactly why I chose for the season. Very little is as iconic as werewolves. This deck is going to be all about werewolves, playing them as wide as we can despite their normal restrictions and overwhelming opponents for the kill. Before we start, let me know down in the comments below what kind of commanders you want to see me build around next. Anyway, let's get into this. First off, let's establish real quick that werewolves have this unique mechanical identity among them. When you cast a werewolf, such as Wolf Bitten Captive, it enters the battlefield as a human werewolf. But if you can go a whole turn without anyone casting spells, they transform into a much stronger creature, such as Kralen Horde Killer. Then if players cast two or more spells, Kralen Horde Killer turns back into the Wolf Bitten Captive. The newest set of werewolves behaves mostly the same, but with a keyword instead, daybound and nightbound, which is basically just keywording this old ability. The key difference between timebound werewolves and the old ones is that timebound werewolves only turn back if the same player casts the two spells, as opposed to triggered werewolves turning back if two spells were cast at all, and if day and night change, the werewolf changes too, regardless of when it changes. This even means that if it's night and a werewolf enters the battlefield, a timebound werewolf will enter transformed. However, they cannot be transformed by force. They are locked and, well, bound by day and night bound. To take advantage of this, we're running three cards. The Celestis, which among being a mana rock that can both gain life and draw cards, can force day back into night if we need it. As well as Immerwolf, which says that wolves and werewolves get plus one plus one and can't transform back into humans, and it's the only way to stop night bound creatures from turning back to human werewolves. And the card Moon Mist, which transforms all human werewolves that aren't time bound onto their backside. In in fact, with Immerwolf on the mind, we actually run several werewolf-focused anthems in the deck. Mayor of Avabrook, which both provides an anthem as well as creates wolf tokens. Child of the Pack, which creates wolves on its front side as well as gives plus one plus zero on its back side. Instigator Gang, which grants a power buff to our attacking creatures. Night Pack Ambusher, which gives plus one plus one and also creates tokens as a reward for not casting spells. Fangblade Brigand, which can serve as a mana sink to increase our creatures' powers. Breakneck Rider, which gives attacking creatures plus one plus zero and trample on its back backside. Full Moon's Rise, which can give our werewolves plus one plus zero and can be sacrificed to regenerate all of them in response to removal and board wipes. Kesseg Naturalist, which can give plus one plus one on its backside and can add mana for expensive werewolf spells. Hound Tamer, which gives our werewolves trample on its backside. Village Watch, which gives haste on its backside. Crew and Outlaw, which gives all of our werewolves menace on its backside. Hell Pack Resurgence, which gives our wolves and werewolves plus one plus one and trample at instant speed. As well as Spirit of the Hunt, which temporarily gives our wolves and werewolves plus zero plus three if they're in harm's way. Notably, most of those anthems cared about wolves as well as werewolves, mostly which are made with tokens in this deck. Erlin, Voice of the Pack, causes our wolves and werewolves to enter a plus one plus one counters, as well as be able to create two two wolves on our own. Silver Fur Partisan creates a two two wolf whenever our creatures become the target of instant sorcery spells. Cult of the Waxing Moon, which makes a 2-2 wolf every time our human werewolves turn into non-human werewolves. Hollow Henge Overlord, which nearly doubles the amount of wolves we control each turn. Tovalar's Huntmaster, which creates two tokens when it enters, two tokens whenever its backside attacks, and grants the ability for your werewolves to fight. And Howling Moon, which makes a 2-2 wolf token whenever a player casts their second spell each turn. And that's all well and good, but we also need a way to draw these spells in the first place? Duskwatch Recruiter can not only filter for our library for creatures, but can even make those creatures cheaper when it's transformed. Hermit of the Natternals draws us cards whenever our opponents cast spells during our turn. Lambhole Elder's Backside draws us cards when it's transformed. Sage of Ancient Lore is an aggressive creature that draws when it enters. Wolfkin Outcast's Backside draws us card whenever one of our werewolves or wolves dies. And Shamanic Revelation draws us a card for each creature we control and can hypothetically gain us a ton of life. 
Additionally, since werewolves don't tend to be cheap, we want a few ways to get more mana or to make our spells cheaper. Good old fashioned cultivated as an example, as well as soul ring, arcane signet, and gruel signet as reliable mana rocks. Goblin Anarchomancer is also great, as it makes our red or green spells cost one less to cast, and we also have two mana dorks that add one mana on their front side, two and transformed, in the form of scorned villager, a mana dork that has vigilance on its backside, and weaver of blossoms, which can add any color of mana. Of course, not everything is going to be cast in this deck. After all, we want to avoid casting spells so we can transform our wolves. And we also want to not cast too many spells in a turn in case it transforms them back. That's why we want to have plenty of mana sinks to spend our mana on instead, in the form of activated abilities that we can, well, activate instead of casting stuff. Howl Pack Piper has the ability to cheat werewolves from our hand into play during the day, and more importantly is our fleet of Blood Rush creatures. Featuring this mechanic from Gatecrash and Dragon's Maze, cards like Scar Goliath, Rebel Hulk, and Wrecking Ogre can all be discarded for mana to give powerful buffs to our attacking creatures instead of having to cast spells. Similarly, Sanctuary Smasher and Titan Off Rex can be discarded to draw a card and put a keyword counter on one of our creatures. Slice and Dice and Deem Worthy can be cycled to deal damage to creatures. Decree of Savagery and Primal Boost can be discarded to give our creatures buffs in the same vein as Blood Rush creatures. Dreyer Tanuki can be discarded to search our library for a basic land to put into play tapped, and Yadara Wandering Monster can be cycled up to four times throughout a game before it cheats itself into play. Additionally, the incredibly powerful Primal Surge is in the deck, which will keep cheating permanents from the top of our library into play until we hit an instant or sorcery card, which we don't have many of. Well, on the note of avoiding casting spells, Mondronin Shaman's backside punishes players whenever they cast a spell. With those said and done, we also have assorted pieces of removal, like Decimate, which can handle multiple targets at once, Ill-Tempered Loner, which can deal damage to any target whenever it takes damage, Daybreak Ranger, which can deal damage to flying creatures or just fight any creature directly itself, Warstorm Surge, which deals damage to any target whenever our creatures enter play, Volatile Arsonist, which deals damage to creatures, players, and planeswalkers at the same time, and Ballista Watcher, which can deal damage to creatures and even force them to not block this turn. We also have a bunch of dual lands like Cinderglade, Game Trail, and Temple of Abandon, as well as utility lands like Mosswort Bridge and Kessig Wolf Run. All in all, the deck is about $60, and I think it's a pretty fun way to celebrate the Halloween season. You can find a link to the deck down in the description below, and remember that you can often save money by getting damaged and foreign cards. This deck was an absolute blast to make and an absolute blast to play. It was so great being able to do a themed deck to celebrate the Halloween season, and I really hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, maybe like, comment, and subscribe. It would help out a ton. And check out these videos, one that YouTube thinks you'll like, and the most recent on the channel. Until we meet again, have a wonderful time, because I think it's a full moon. <laughs>